All right, Mate. Mate, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I'm originally from the uh, city of Azusa. It's um, in San Gilbert Valley. Um, Tell me about your family. Um, family, um, Hispanic, fam foster family. I was born, um, taken from my mother from birth. Uh, I was in an incubator for about a month, and then uh, my foster parents uh, um, picked me up uh, on the 30, on pretty much on the 31st day or 30 days, I think they said. And I stood with them roughly till about 13, 14. Um, started a uh, Started getting high, getting drug, doing drugs and stuff, and uh, which caused my foster parents pretty much, uh, uh, well, foster parent and and probation, um, pretty much uh, removed me from their home and put me in uh, um, group homes, uh, like six six uh, six six bed group homes. Um, they think they, they said pretty much they think I, they considered me. Um, not um, um, the, they don't want me in big facilities, so they always put me in, in like four bedroom homes with uh, it's uh, six six other uh, residents there. I think the minimum they will have is up to six people, but it was all the worst places. Hmm? Um, why did your mom lose you? Uh, drugs. I was born um, under the influence of uh, uh, crack or heroin and uh, uh, alcohol. I was I was high as shit. I guess from, from what they say. Um, How would you describe your childhood with the foster family? It was it was it was good. Um, it was good. It was good up until like it, it was like they treated me like their own. They treated me as if. As if I was, uh, as if they conceived, as they conceived me and birthed me, and uh, for the most part, um, well, they're really good parents. Actually, I, I thank them for the person I've, I've grown up to be. Um, other, with, you know, without the drug use and just the overall individual who I am, I think I'm a pretty decent person, and, and I would uh, pretty much thank them for. Just for giving me a chance. They're great people, beautiful people. So, no, no rough spots in your childhood? Um, no, well, at nine, at nine, I was um, uh, I was molested by a friend of the family, and um, he uh, uh, pretty much like uh, well, he fucked me when I was a kid. I was, I was, and it um, when he did that, he fucking pretty much. He ripped. Uh, he pretty much ripped me, ripped me, ripped me open, and had to get stitches. And I still never told them about. It. They, they no, have no clue of it. Even after my dad pretty much found out from some of my other siblings that he's done something, ended up kicking his ass right there in the, in the, in the living room, all the way up, all the way up to out the house to the front yard. And that, that was actually the moment when I realized that maybe we were doing something wrong. You know what I mean? I really didn't, I didn't think, uh, I didn't think nothing of it. I thought it was just normal, what he was doing. But after seeing my dad kick, kick his ass, I was just like pretty much like, okay, maybe we were doing something wrong. And after that, I started learning, I started learning about what is it that we were doing and how bad it is really. I became very, I would say sexually um, curious and extreme appetite. Um, we became very angry, very uh, rebellious. Like drugs, like for sure. Getting high, weed is, they said, weed was like, it's one thing, but I was doing anything that came my way when I was younger. Like once I hit 14, 15, and see, I was living in, it was just, not crack, but everything else, I, I was, Get high. That's all. I, that's all I would say. Is get high. Fuck it. Come up to me with anything, and just let's get high. Are drugs? Why you left your foster family so so early? Um, drugs. Drugs is a part of the reason. I'm then then my behavior, things that I was doing. Uh, um, I guess while I was high and sober, shit. A majority of the time, the the stealing or the sneaking out for nights at a time. Um, 
just over, over just fighting like a lot and fighting. I fought feeling suspended, expelled from schools like the other thing to do, especially once I hit junior high. Um, it's just always something, something or someone had it pissed off all the time. I had a chip on my shoulder, not sure where it came from. Um, uh, my dad, uh, he had, it, get, it got to the point where like I respect, I respect him and I, I love my dad a, a lot. I also feared him at one point. And he came to, um, in sixth, seventh, sixth or seventh grade, came to all my schools, he came to my cl all my classes and he asked the, um, the, 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 the teacher in the classroom if my son, for some odd reason, just drops down and just starts doing push-ups out of the middle of nowhere. Please excuse him. Just let him do what he's doing and, uh, and he'll carry, but he'll continue on with whatever he's supposed to do when he's done. And um, the reason was because he pretty much said if I get suspended or if I, he gets another call or something, on God, my anger, I used to get so angry, smallest things that set me off. And boom, I'm fighting or something. I mean, and uh, um, uh, my dad pretty much told me, like, I would, I would pretty much, I brought you into this world, I would take you out. The next time you get, you get anything from school that's negative, I'm gonna fuck you up. And I believed him. And I did exactly that. I wouldn't do push-ups until my arms are weak. Um, the push-ups would do what? They would. The push-ups calm me down. They would calm you down. Yeah, completely. Like as long as I push and push, it'll, uh, it'll calm me all the way down and it'll tire me all the way out to the point where if somebody wanted to fight me, I would probably get my ass kicked simply because I would burn myself all the way out. And by the time I was uh, in six, by the time I was 16, I had 20-inch arms, 35 centimeter chest, huge. I was built like fucking an, an adult just from doing push-ups all the time. Though I was dropping. I was dropping down to do pushes maybe about three or four times a, a class. Like it's, I didn't realize how angry I was, but it also, it, it diffused a lot, a lot, a lot of my situations. It was a way of dealing with your anger. Hmm? It was a way of dealing with your anger. Right. And uh, that went into football. Didn't like football too much, but my dad put me in MMA and I was doing much martial arts for a couple of years and that was like pretty much my outlet on just keeping calm and collective and it worked for a while it worked for a long while but then uh uh started up with my once started putting me in group homes and all that shit fucking that's when the other drugs started to come to play cocaine or pretty much well, a lot of weed and but drinking drinking uh, now is not my thing well, when I was younger, and I was, I was the type to where I don't, I used to say I don't, I don't drink to, to sip, I drink to get fucked up, and that was exactly what I was doing, just drinking and smoking weed, and if somebody had something I never liked, I never tried, I was willing to try shrooms or acid or, and I'll try, I'll try to the extremes. Um, uh, and in between all that, it's also fighting uh, pretty much my sexual identity. I'm not, I just didn't really know what, what direction I was headed. Because after the experience with my uncle, I didn't know, really didn't know what the fuck I was supposed to do. Um, a lot of sex with a lot of different people, a lot of different types of sex, gay sex, straight sex. Um, I wouldn't say I've done it all, sexually I've not done it all, but I've done a lot, a lot. A lot of things that, uh, a lot of things that I didn't, I didn't even know I would be willing to do. Um, was it cause, because of the drugs? Majority of them. Majority of them, well, even to, to this day, is still somewhat of a, I'm not a prostitute, well, escort, prostitute, same shit. But I do, yeah, I do sell, I sell a part of myself for $250 sometimes, depending on how much, how much of a high roller the, person, the individual looks, it depends on how I price them. Sometimes it's good 500 an hour or 500 a session or whatever. And 
I just do that as much, but I hate I hate doing it. But for some reason, I can never just not. I mean, just like I can. I always need to use. I can always use the money. I can always use the money. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But your drug now is crystal meth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the crystal meth is just the the one that I just couldn't. Everything else, tried it, did it for a while. Done with it. Tried to do it for a while. So I so for yeah, but crystal meth. Crystal meth has a hold on me, and I'm not sure what the fuck. I like just that shot. Smoking it does. It does those sort of keeps me keeps me off from you know hitting like being on edge. But sure. Using a needle shooting, doing a shot is, is, is where I'm at home at in it. It just uh, it makes you extremely horny. It makes me just, all I want to do is have sex. So and majority of the time, it's like, yeah, it's preferences, like, it, but it, that preference changes around whenever it wants. Sometimes I just want to have sex with a woman. Sometimes I want to have sex with a trans. Sometimes I just want to have sex with a, 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 a man or a twink or whatever you want to call it. Um, just whatever is it that pretty much uh, 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 my, so my options are at that present time. Um, I've been, uh, I've never posted myself, but I've always had friends or yeah, friends pretty much who, do, who pretty much are prostitutes or escorts and they, uh, they always help me out. Either they recommend me or I'll get a random call from somebody and you know, just show up at their place, take care of business, and that'll be that. Um, I'm guessing. I'm guessing the the size, the size of, of the size of my penis is the main reason why I've, I've always been able to charge so high and and got as much attention as I did because it's just pe people want big so. Only time people think of big, they call me. Or a lot of my friends, a little group that I was in, all of us were pretty big, so it was easy for us to have, you know share clients or whatever. And where do you stay now? Um, when I while I was doing all this, um, where, I mean, where are you living now? Now I'm I'm living in uh, Hollywood. You're on the street. Oh yeah, I'm homeless in Hollywood. You support yourself with the sex work. Um, I so yeah, I support myself with sex work, and uh, I'm a barber by trade, and um, I'm self-employed. So my clientele is scattered all over LA, but um, for the most part, I go to I go to you if you want your haircut and cut hair. Um, you know, uh, other things, um, hustler, just any, anything I can pretty much get my hands on to sell, or anything I can. Um, um, fix and sell or help somebody sell or somehow so i got I, various different things that i do to make money but prostitution is like always been the uh the go-to the, the the last the last the last minute go-to like but more and a more um uh the the so it's pretty much the closest option that I have, really the easiest option, um, was a prostitute. Um, How old are you now? I'm um, 34. 34. Yeah, yeah uh, um, it's just the thing, it's like, it, it started bothering me, but it really doesn't, really I don't care now. It's just, some, at, time, at times it, it, it takes a toll on you. Um, Feeling like a sex slave or somebody who um, I have sex with someone who I'm not attracted to at, like at all or just dirty or nasty or whatever it can even be. It's, a, it's like there's a, um, a specific group of people, a very specific group, who are infatuated with a fucking stocky or fat black man with a fucking 13 inch penis and those people are always the ones that uh, uh say i work the hardest with because it's uh but um
you still have contact with your family? I have my foster parent now. Um, one of my ex-girlfriends did some, um, I went to jail. She put me in jail for almost two years ago, but um, in that time she, um, she managed to just pretty much rip my foster family out of my life completely. She did getting high. She just got on Facebook and texted them God knows what, which offended, which offended my parents and my brother. And they pretty much said, you're dead to us. Just don't call us no more. Leave us all the way alone. We want nothing to do with you. And I left it at that. So. How many days have you gone without sleep? Um, I'm probably at like four days now. Four days without sleep. You do that a lot. I do, yeah. I don't have. I don't uh, do tents or like everything I have in my backpack. Is everything I own, I don't have like a stash by where I have clothes or I normally buy my clothes every day if I can. Um, and I pretty much fall asleep down there every day. Anywhere. Mate, what, what do you what do you worry about now? What are you afraid of? Um, what am I for, um, being stuck in this bullshit? It's uh, you know, I only stay young for so long, and I've already seen uh, uh, the uh, the um, how the process pretty much started. I'm already seeing how exactly how it's gonna go for me the older I get. Um, and if I don't, uh, if I just don't get it right soon. I would think it's a depressing lifestyle, right? 